Okay, so now we're gonna um, we're gonna prove um, that corresponding angles are congruent. Now, corresponding angles are also the angles that um, you know are formed. They're pairs of angles that are formed at a transversal. So um, you know, a transversal again is a line that cuts across two lines in the same plane. So you know, these three lines all lay in this two-dimensional plane you're looking at here and a uh, line what ADE or line D or whatever you want to call it DE or AE or AD um, this line cuts across line AB and line CF um, and since it cuts across both it forms um, these unique pairs of angles now because these lines are parallel special things happen and, it, and that's the condition you have to keep in mind you know the condition is that the lines must be parallel. If the lines are not parallel, you're not going to find anything really exceptional. But again, um, what we're talking about here, I'll just make this uh, pretty large, and um, and I'm going to just click here. Oh, hold on. Let's see if I can make that large. Okay. And um, these are called corresponding angles. Okay. So they're called corresponding angles no matter what okay the ones we're going to talk about here but they're only really special when they're parallel so maybe I ought to change that here um, and uh, that they must be parallel in order for the special property to apply and guess what that special property is that special property is called congruency okay so in order for these guys to be congruent you can see that they are congruent um, if I if I move the line in any way, change the shape of the angle, you can see that this angle and that angle is congruent all the time. Um, so you know we can observe that and say it doesn't really matter as long as these lines are parallel, they're going to be congruent. And you can observe that, um, and you know an observation can allow us to you know basically um, you know assume that this this might be you know the case but we need to prove it and we need a theory that's sound that allows us to prove it so the question is how do we how do we prove that this right here angle and this right here angle the two angles that correspond um, are congruent and you'll remember I talked about corresponding angles before um, when I talked about uh, um, uh, in, in a previous video we talked about the location of the stop sign as you're driving down the road so like this angle here would correspond to this angle here right um, the one I have marked right now here uh, and this one right here that's marked they they correspond to each other so how would you prove that well you're gonna just use the linear pair postulate and you're gonna use this uh, same side interior postulates again so let's write them out um, you know the same side interior postulate And then what that says is that, you know, um, angles that are same side interior angles um, with when, oops, when lines are parallel are supplementary, right? Okay, that's not, that's not real. Oh boy, that's ugly. Maybe I just have to see if I can change that to just small down there. Yeah. So basically, if the same side angles, that would be this same side interior angles. So that'd be this angle here, and this angle here. If they are, um, if the lines are parallel, then these two are going to be supplementary. And then the other one that we want to remember is um, we want to remember. I'll put that back to small. That um, linear pairs are supplementary, and that comes from the linear pair postulate postulate and that's often I, I don't know I abbreviated as LPP to kind of remember um, so the linear pairs are pairs that of angles that have an adjacent a common side uh, that is an adjacent side right um, obviously they have a common vertex as well and then they're they're non adjacent sides so in this case we're talking EDF angle EDF and ADF the DF part is the adjacent side, so DE would be the ray that's non-adjacent, and DA is non-adjacent, so they have to form opposite rays, right? 
So the linear pair sup um, linear pairs being supplementary is the linear pair postulate. So that means this is 180 degrees. So now we can just do just like you did before. It's actually pretty simple now. We're gonna go through this very quick. Now we know. Oh, let me let me um, let me actually get my pencil here and we'll mark this out. We'll call this angle one. Um, we'll call this angle right here two and then we'll call this angle right here three okay so we're going to just kind of write out what our proof would be and it would look something like this so I could say that one plus two equals 180 degrees um, well let's see one and two are a linear pair and that's by the definition of linear pairs right and then that means one and two are supplementary and that is the linear pair postulate right and that means one plus two measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180 degrees of course we're only working in degrees right now there are other ways to measure um, uh, angles besides in degrees but we're measuring these in degrees okay so we're saying one plus two equals 180 because that is the definition of supplementary oops angles okay so these are this is important steps in the logic you start by pronouncing that these two here are going to be a linear pair right because of the definition and that they are supplementary because of the linear pair postulate right and then that means that if you add them together it equals 180 all right, what about these guys in here? So we're going to say, um, here we go. The next step in our logic would be 3 plus 2 uh, are same side, side interior angles um, at a transversal of parallel lines. So that is a requirement, you know, for the same side interior postulate the requirement or the special condition is that the line must be parallel right so we put that in there so the first statement is same side interior angles at a transversal of parallel lines and once we've you know stated that part of it we can um, you know we can now go to the same side interior postulate so that means 3 plus 2 are supplementary and that is by the same side interior postulate right and then that means three the measure of angle three and the measure of angle two equals 180 right and then what we have then is that um, we can well we can just kind of I'm going to show you something real quick what they would do is they would um, uh, well they would write it out as the measure of angle three and I don't have the symbols here but we're not talking about angle three itself you know they don't add the angle itself you just add its measure so the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees this is a more formal way a proper way to write it out um, and even better yet would we would use the the notation I'll show you the notation for that with the pen okay so we would use um, we would say this represents the measure of angle we would use in this case you know like E D F okay and that would be the proper way instead of just calling it three and two is we would call this B A D plus A D F right and we would say always put M angle right the M and the symbol for angle so that we're saying the measure of the angle so that's basically what you know what you should probably do or you should be familiar with enough in case you run into it in a more formal setting okay the angles themselves aren't being measured but their their measures are uh, rather let me say that again the angles themselves are not being added but their measures are okay so we know that if we add together the angles um, that they're going to equal 180 degrees so um, you know we've gotten to this point where we said 3 plus 2 equals 180 1 plus 2 equals 180 so we can kind of use that information to conclude here and what we would do is we go 1 plus 2 equals 180 equals 
3 plus 2, right? And that then leads us to, um, you know, because we've already proven that those two facts are true, so now we can say 1 plus 2 equals 3 plus 2. Do you remember what property that is? Oops, I didn't write that right, did I? 1 plus 2 equals 3 plus 2. So do you remember what that property was? Remember we said if they're both equal to the same thing, we can cross over and just say they're equal to each other. So the root trans is what you want to remember. Trans kind of means to cross over. So this is going to be the transitive property right, of equality. Transitive property of equality. And it's interesting because if we were just talking about how these angles were, um, we wanted to prove how they were in, in cases with congruency, you could use the transitive property of congruency. But here we're talking about a transitive property of equality. So what do we do now? What's the next step? Well, we say 1 plus 2 minus 2 is equal to 3 plus 2 minus 2. Sorry, that's my phone. And we're going to just mute that. Sorry. And what did we do here? Well, all we're really doing is we're taking away 2 from both sides. And that is the subtraction property of equality. And I'm just going to put that. Um, so that says that we can take away the same amount from both sides and now we end up with 1 equals 3 and that is our um, we just simplified right and that's all we're doing there so this right here is um, really you know the concluding part of that proof move that up a little bit and get this over here and maybe just try to eh, maybe that'll work okay so you can kind of follow the logic here as you need to. Make sure you understand it. And if you have any questions, let me know.